Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you our latest version of sensorless control that we've made for brushless DC motors and PMSM motors, especially for high speed applications in this video. So my focus now will be on a motor from MOOC company that can reach up to 16,000 RPM. It's a BLDC motor with delta winding, so pretty special. And uh, we are going to run it at, uh, in sensorless fashion. As you can see here, I'm not having any sensor connection. The only thing we have here is the connection of the motor, the phases of ABC of the motor to ABC of solo. But to be honest, for our sensorless control, the order of the phases doesn't matter. So you can mount them as you, as you wish. So the unit is here, turned on, operational, connected through a USB cable to my PC, and everything is operating at 48 volt. So the system here is 48 volt. I'm using Solo Uno high current, 45 amp version, which is able to deliver up to 45 amp DC or the equivalent RMS of it. So now I'm gonna go to motion terminal and uh, show you how you can set the system up for driving a motor like that. So first of all, I can see motion terminal detecting my unit I prefer to go to action section so we, so we see all the parameters. Here we have the current limit that is set to the maximum limit. It's not necessary, but just to show. Uh, then we have some other parameters like switching frequency. For most motors, literally 99% of motors, 20 kHz is enough. Then you can set the regeneration current limit if you don't want to have current going back to your supply. But I recommend to keep a little bit of it here, even if your supply cannot handle it just to not to reduce the dynamic performance of the system too much. Then we have the number of poles that should be selected correctly. Here is four poles motor. And then uh, finally we have the motor type that as I'm reaching to very high speeds, uh, I'm selecting BLC PMSM ultra fast. Usually for motors above 2000 RPM, you need to go with, uh, with this option. The rest doesn't matter for sensorless control. Motor identification is something that we have done before one time by pressing this button, so I'm not going to repeat it. It just identifies the, these four parameters, current control gains and the resistance and inductance. And the most important part of the story is selecting the sensorless mode. So here in feedback control mode, I, I've selected the sensorless control. And after that, you see a menu like this, that in sensor and sensorless calibration panel, you see a parameter which is called transition speed. So this is the speed that we go from partially closed loop to full closed loop. And as a rule of thumb, is usually around 20% of the nominal speed of the motor. So this motor is 16,000 RPM, uh, something around 2,500 or 3,000 RPM is enough. You can certainly go lower, you need to tweak a little bit, you need to uh, play around with it, but usually, a start with 20% is a very good start and uh, just to see how the system operates. Then after that, uh, we are gonna make sure we are in digital mode. So I'm sending all the commands through USB. Uh, I'm in a speed controlling mode and I have tuned the speed controller gains, KP and KI. Uh, so here KP is around 0 0.1 and KI is 0 0.002. This is something that you have to find during the initial phases of the setup and then the last two parameters are the speed acceleration and deceleration that is important to give some sort of acceleration and deceleration. So not too high that the motor cannot have a good startup, especially in sensorless. Uh, not too low, so it takes much time. So it, it's not that sensitive, but anyways, 20 revolution per square second is a good number. So what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna run the performance monitoring and have an eye on the IQ, which is the torque of the motor and the speed. And the goal I have here is after setting all these parameters, uh, reaching to the nominal speed of this motor, which is 16,000 RPM, and then go up and down and see what happens. So let's just start with 10,000 RPM. So the motor goes through a startup phase and then goes all the way to the 10,000 RPM and stays there. So you can see here that The whole process is divided into two phases. The first phase, which is the partially closed loop phase that we call it a startup. And at the transition speed around 2800 RPM, we went to the full closed loop. So this area is completely closed loop. So if I keep 
running the monitoring, now I'm at 10,000 RPM. I can go to uh, 16,000 RPM, maximum speed of the motor. And you can see the motor is accelerating. If I look at the current, as the motor is in no load condition, I'm having around 2.4 amps in it, which is very good. But the motor is operating well at 16,000 RPM. I can go back to 12,000 RPM. And even because I have acceleration and deceleration, I can change the direction. But the safest way is to stop the motor and change the direction. So let's do that. I will stop the motor. So the motor decelerates back to zero RPM. And then I want to uh, change the direction. This time we go to 12,000 RPM on the other side. So positive 12,000. And as you can see, it's working well. I can go back to 16,000 RPM in this direction. And then all the way back down to something near this transition speed. So what I recommend you is not to go below the transition speed in this condition. So maybe we can go to 4,000 RPM. Because the transition speed actually is the speed that the motor has enough back EMF and flux shape that we can measure it in the sensorless algorithm. So that's why it's important to stay above that. So here we are at 4,000 RPM and everything is working smoothly. Thank you so much for following this video. Please follow our channel and subscribe to have the latest updates.